The saga surrounding a BBC presenter's alleged creepy behaviour once again takes a giant wrecking ball to the notion of ideological consistency. The TLDR is that Hugh Edwards, a 61-year-old married BBC News presenter with five kids, and an always reliable amplifier of the message, someone who proudly includes his pronouns in his bio, was accused by a young person's parents, presumably male, of paying £35,000 for the then 17-year-old to send him indecent pictures. The parents claim that this money was then used to fund the youth's drug addiction. But the youth, via his lawyer, after the media had run the story, but not named Hugh Edwards, denied that any of that happened. Then the police said no crime had occurred. But then numerous other people came forward to reveal they'd been sent, quote, abusive, creepy and inappropriate messages by Edwards, including BBC staff. After days of speculation, Edwards was then publicly named by his own wife, who said all the stress caused by the press attention had caused the BBC presenter to have a mental health crisis and check himself into a hospital. The mental health excuse was then immediately swallowed by every single one of Edward's shit lib defenders and colleagues. Then the entire story was reframed to ensconce Edwards himself as the victim. Imagine if Nigel Farage, or any GB News presenter, or anyone on the right, had been merely accused of soliciting perv pics from teenagers or had merely been accused of sending abusive, inappropriate messages, then had cited my mental health as an excuse. Would shit libs rush to defend their privacy while expressing deep concern for their mental well-being? Of course not, they'd do the exact opposite. They'd immediately believe the very worst of the accusations, then decimate their reputation and demand they never be allowed to have a public platform ever again. But Hugh Edwards has got pronouns in his bio, so his reputation must be defended at all costs. When the accusations are levelled at him, it's nothing more than homophobic abuse. His right to privacy must be resolute, despite his BBC wages being paid by the taxpayer via the licence fee. Interesting, isn't it, how it's always in the public interest to wreck someone on the right's reputation, but never for someone who has the correct opinions. Lefty liberal Twitter when Nigel Farage reveals he can't get a bank account serves you right, you must have done something. When Hugh Edwards is under investigation for sexual misconduct, be kind, let the investigation finish, respect his privacy. If you're not in the club, they'll destroy you for nothing. If you're in the club, they'll defend you no matter what. Fellow BBC presenter John Sopel demanded that Edwards' private life be left alone. A courtesy that wasn't extended to Boris Johnson when the shitlib media went full court press with a story about an argument Johnson had with his girlfriend inside his own house. They also constantly wet the bed over Johnson and the Tories breaking lockdown rules. But astoundingly, Edwards gets a free pass. Despite allegedly travelling to another county, violating lockdown rules to meet another young person he found on a dating app at his flat. Doesn't matter, he's got pronouns in his bio. Michael Fallon was forced to quit as defence secretary because he tried to kiss a woman during a lunch 14 years beforehand. Didn't have pronouns in his bio though. The metropolitan elite rushing to Edwards' defence is now going to exploit this for even more censorship. I'm sure all the liberal elite panjandrums mm. who are defending Hugh Edwards this evening and condemning The Sun and rallying to the defence of the BBC, I'm sure their response will be, well, it's outrageous that this poor man was ever named. Um, you know, the mother, the, his wife would never have felt under pressure had his name not been revealed on social media. We need to clamp down on this kind of wild west that is social media. That'll be their response. More censorship, not an examination of the mores of BBC employees. Also observe how the narrative now becomes about immoral gutter press sun journalists intruding into Edward private life, making Edwards the martyr, giving him the moral high ground. When if any of these accusations about messages or meeting people, and there are now numerous, turn out to be true, Edwards has allegedly been cheating on his wife and kids for years, which again, it may not be illegal, but it's rancidly immoral. And there's not even any discussion about that. The whole narrative is about how he's the real victim, again, because my mental health. What about his poor wife and children? Same thing happened when Schofield announced he was gay and had been misleading his wife for 27 years. They all applauded him. Again, they'll immediately cancel anyone on the right for any mild indiscretion, whether it's true or not, while simultaneously holding them to a far higher moral standard. While for people on the left, there's no moral standard to meet whatsoever. And so long as you have pronouns in your bio, you'll be defended to the hilt no matter what you did. <laughs>
Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me by subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.